Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm here with one of the most anticipated and frequently asked topic. In today's video, I will be showing you how to color grade a drone footage in DaVinci Resolve 19. If you are ready to take the drone footage you have carefully captured to the next level, let's jump right into the tutorial. All right, on my timeline, I have two drone clips like this, both shot with a DJI drone. Now let's switch to the color page. In my project settings under color management, I've selected DaVinci YRGB as the color science. The timeline color space is set to DaVinci White Gamut Intermediate and the output color space is set to Rec. 709 Gamma 2.4. Now we first need to convert this footage into Rec. 709 color space. We can do this in two different ways and I will show you both methods. There are lots available for download on DJI's website. I will leave the link in the description. In the first method, you can use these LUTs to perform the conversion. In the second option, we will convert to Rec. 709 using the color space transform. Let me quickly demonstrate this in practice. First, in the color management section, there is a LUTs tab. When I click on the open LUT folder, we see all the DaVinci's built-in LUTs in separate folders. Here I have a folder named DGI. I will drag the LUTs I downloaded from the website into this folder. After that, we can close this window. But there's an important point to note here. You need to change the 3D lookup table interpolation from trilinear to tetrahedral. In simple terms, this setting uses more color information to help eliminate some bending issues in your footage. So it's important to choose it. And then click save. After that, we will go back to the LUTs tab and find the DGI folder. Right click on an empty space and select refresh. You will see our two LUTs now appear. I downloaded two different LUTs and I'm not entirely sure how each one will affect the image. I will try them for the first time with you in this tutorial. Let's apply the first one. Yeah, this actually looks quite good. Now let's also try the second one. It's a bit softer than the first one, but that's fine. We can continue with either one of them. All right, now we can start creating a node tree. The nodes where you apply the LUT should be placed near the end of your node tree. That's why all the adjustments should be made beforehand. After performing this conversion, there are a few simple adjustments we can make. We can add a node for white balance, one for exposure, one for contrast, and one for the maybe curves. It's not very important what I'm adding right now because I actually want to show you the workflow with the color space transform. But let's briefly go over this method as well. Okay, first, based on your image's brightness, you can make minor adjustments in the primaries panel by tweaking the lift, gamma, gain, and the offset wheel. After that, I will right click on the white balance node and choose linear from the gamma drop down list. I will drop the luma mixer to zero and then I will use the gain wheel to adjust the white balance like this. This is generally the best method for achieving a good white balance. Of course, many adjustments are up to you from this point on. Simply adjust according to what your footage actually needs. Next, I will move on to the contrast node. In the contrast node, you can activate editable splines like this and create a more punchier look. Afterwards, you can increase the saturation a bit. The global saturation in the HDR panel works quite well for this. In the curves node, if there is a specific color you want to adjust, you can focus on that. For instance, if you want to boost the blue of the sky a little bit more, select blue color in the viewer and increase its saturation. This way, the sky's color becomes more obvious. With these simple adjustments, you can achieve a quick and effective outcome. Okay, now let's move on to the part that I actually want to show you. Let me also take a still from this and in the end, we can compare the two. I'm going to reset this grade and also in the project settings, we are still using DaVinci White Gamut. First, let me create a few nodes. After that, we can start with the Rec. 709 conversion. I'm applying a color space transform to the first node. And similarly, I'm going to add another color space transform to the last node. In the first node, for the input color space, I will select DJI D Gamut, since this is a DJI clip. For the input gamma, I will choose DJI D Lock. Then, I'm going to set the output color space to DaVinci White Gamut and the output gamma to DaVinci Intermediate. Okay, you see that the image comes through here. We have performed the conversion from DGI D Gamut to DaVinci White Gamut in this node. Then further down the pipeline, we will convert from DaVinci White Gamut to Rec. 709 with the output gamma set to gamma 2.4. Yes, 
Right now, it looks slightly different from when we used a lot earlier, of course, because we have more room to work with the image. Next, let's add a few more nodes along with the white balance, exposure and contrast. You can think of these nodes as secondary adjustments. Let's call this one saturation and call this one look. For now, this one could remain empty. It's not a problem. We can go back to this one if we need any more adjustments. I want to start with the exposure first. I'm going to increase the gain. I also want to boost the offset a little bit. All right, let's also bump up the contrast slightly in the primaries and decide where the contrast sits using the pivot slider. I think that works well. Okay, in the contrast node, we can use the curves panel again. Just like before, the editable splines are active right now. I'm lowering the shadows a bit. Of course, I'm being careful not to crash the blacks too much. At the same time, I'm trying to preserve the highlights in the sky. Maybe we can bring this point a bit closer to the top. Okay, for saturation, let's again use the global saturation from the HDR panel. I think it gives a better result than the saturation slider in the primaries panel. It doesn't look too bad for now, but we can do so much more. In the curves panel, if you go to the luminance versus saturation tab, you can make more detailed adjustments to the image's saturation. The right side affects the highlights, while the left side influences the shadow saturation based on their luminance. I want to go back to the white balance node because I feel there is a slight inconsistency in the highlights. I will right click on this node and choose linear from the gamma option. I will drop the luma channel to zero so that the exposure isn't affected. And I generally do a circular motion to adjust with the gain wheel like this. Then I try to find the spot where white is more accurate. Yes, we have definitely nailed it. I based it on the white on the ferry, which is why the sky appeared a bit orange after this adjustment. And really that's exactly how it looked that day. I mean, in other words, by getting as close as possible to the real scene, we are achieving an accurate result. Okay, after that, you might want to create a specific look. To do that, you can directly select a certain color from the viewer. Then in the hue versus hue panel, you can play around with that tone a bit. However, I don't recommend overdoing it because it can rob the image of its natural feel and authenticity. I didn't like this approach too much. Let's try another method. Again, in the primaries panel, I will pull the offset toward the blue area while still respecting the overall image. I will pull the gamma toward the opposite side. Then once more, I will try to find the correct white point. This is before and this is after. Yes, as you can see, this gives us a completely different look. Although it's a bit too much, we can take the edge off a little bit. Yeah, this feels more accurate. The exposure has dropped slightly, but that's fine. We can also lower the highlights a little and open up the shadows as well. This is before and this is after. So after these adjustments, the image started to develop an overall green cast. Perhaps we could add an adjust node and use the offset wheel to reduce the green a bit further. Okay, I think we have reached a pretty good result. In fact, much more can be done. For example, you could use a window to bring certain areas more into focus while leaving others in the background. Maybe if you go to the saturation versus luminance in the saturation node and lower it a bit more, you might boost the color intensity in the highlights further. After this, you can use various effects to make the image even more appealing, such as glow effects or other similar techniques to add completely different flavor to the footage. Finally, let's compare this with the previous version. This is the second version with the CST workflow, and here is the first one with the DGI LED. Of course, we didn't spend much time on the first version, but with the second one, we have achieved a more stylized look. Alright guys, color grading at drone footage was one of the most frequently asked topics. I hope this video has answered some of your questions, but please don't forget to share your thoughts in the comments. If you would like to support me, you can like this video and subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video. Until then, take care.